Welcome to Bond Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm participating in the What Would You Make Challenge, hosted by my friends Zaina of OK at Home, Connie of Connie's Creative Creations, and our guest host this month is Crafty Leany. I'm making this eclectic printed bunny lamp. Let's get into it. I cut my bunny from half inch plywood using my scroll saw. He sanded and ready for paint. He's a good size, about 21 inches tall. I'm going to give him an extra wipe to clear off any remaining sawdust. And then I'm going to give this fella two coats of Deco Art chalky finish in the color lace. It's a warm white tone. We'll jump right in and get him painted. I think from the picture, this looks like it would be time consuming, but it's actually a really quick project. To be honest, I really wasn't sure how to describe this bunny. He's not really French country, but he would definitely fit into that decor style. So anyway, we'll get him all painted up. Now that he has two good coats, we'll paint the edges black. I'm using acrylic paint for this. I'll paint the inside edges first, then his outside edge. I won't worry too much if it's not terribly neat, because this piece will be heavily distressed. So it really won't matter too much. And I also painted the back black as well. Also, I cut a stand for him from scrap wood. You'll see that later on. I painted that black too. I'm using a couple of my favorite stencils to give him his printed look. These are for paper crafting, but honestly, I use them for everything. My first layer will be a tattered harlequin pattern, and I'm using a cosmetic sponge to pants on ceramic coat sand dune, which is like a sandy grayish color. I use the harlequin sporadically, leaving some areas bare, at least at the moment. This is just kind of like, you know, an undercoat. Now my next layer will be scripted text. I'm using Ceram Coat Cable Knit for this. It's a warm gray, and I'm gonna fill in some of the bare spots with this. And I'll also overlap the Harlequin in places as well. My final layer is my favorite. It's the Time Traveler stencil clock faces, numbers, and other clock elements. I'm going to use black stamping ink to apply this layer. I'll use the stencil more liberally, overlaying most of the bunny with it. I'm rotating the stencil so that the pattern isn't, you know, repetitive. I decided to go with the ink instead of paint because I wanted a more subtle appearance. I didn't want it to be harsh black. Yeah, so pretty much each part of the bunny will have an element of the clock somewhere on them. Whether it's a number, part of a clock face, or the hands, something on every part of the bunny will get part of this time traveler stencil. To tone down the colors, I'm applying a layer of white wax. I didn't have a clean cloth to apply it, but I have a load of these utilities gloves, which I gotta say, work great. I'm adding more to the darker areas, and I want this to have, you know, a faded, worn look. I'll tell you, this really worked well. So I continued until I'm happy with it. Next, I give it a light sanding, focusing mainly on the edges, you know, to give it that worn look. You, you get the idea. I'm coming in with my Jolie Black Finishing Wax. Again, focusing mainly along the edges just kind of dusting it on and wiping it back. I'll build on it this way again until I'm satisfied.
Now for a bit more aging, I'll hit the edges with some Tim Holtz Vintage Photograph Distressing Ink until I'm happy with it. So as I mentioned, I cut the stand from some scrap wood, which I'll attach with both wood glue and a couple of corner braces. I mark out where the screws are going to go. I drill my pilot holes. I add the glue and position the stand, and then I'll add my screws. As a final embellishment, I'll make them a big old bow. So I have this cool checked canvas ribbon and a striped canvas ribbon. It's really heavy duty and I love it. So I'm just gonna make a two leap bow from each and stack them. I'm making my first loop, pinching it in the middle, and I'll twist the tail so that the pattern faces forward. Due to the weight of this ribbon, it takes a wee bit of effort to work it, but I love, love, love it. So worth it. Doing my best there to make the second loop the same size as the first, pinching and twisting, and then I'll tie it off with a pipe cleaner. I don't know about you, but for me, I find it's easier to twist the bow rather than the pipe cleaner. And I make this straight bow the same way, just slightly bigger. I add the check bow on top of the straight bow and twist them together and fluff it. Bows aren't really my strong suit, although I love them. I don't really make them enough, I think, so sometimes I forget what I'm doing, but I tend to get there in the end. And I'm just going to dovetail the ends here. I clip off the excess of the pipe cleaner and I'm going to use the zip tie to attach it to the bunny and I'll cut off the excess of the zip tie too. All that's left to do is to add my candle. Here's a final look. This guy will fit nicely with the rest of my black and white Easter decorations. I really love the look of a layered pattern, you know, where you really have to take a good look to see and appreciate all the various elements. I don't think pictures really do him justice. He turned out pretty cool. I'm very pleased with how he turned out. I hope you like him too. Thank you Zaina and Connie for hosting and Lini for guest hosting. I've dropped links to their channels as well as the playlist in the description box. Please be sure to check it out 
and show them some love. It would be awesome if you'd like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. I'd also like to wish Liz Sanabria a very happy birthday. Liz is a wonderful supporter of all of our channels. Many blessings, Liz. Cheers to another trip around the sun. Many more. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.